Before the Ever After by Jacqueline Woodson. Part 1, 1999. Memory like a movie. The memory goes like this. Ollie's got the ball and he's running across my yard when dad comes out of nowhere. Soft tackles him to the ground. Then everyone is cheering and laughing because we didn't even know my dad was home. I thought you had a game, I said, grabbing him. It's a half hug, half tickle, but the other guys, Derry and Daniel, hop on too. And Ollie's escaped, so he jumps on top of all of us, jumping on my dad. Yeah, Mr. J, Derry says. I thought we'd be watching you on TV tonight. Coach giving me a break, my daddy says. He climbs out from under, shaking us off like we're feathers, not boys. Aw, oh, man, Derry says. Yeah, we all say, aw, oh, man. Sometimes a player needs to rest, Daddy says. He looks at each of us for a long time, a strange look, like he's just now seeing us. Then he tosses the ball so far we can't even see it anymore. And my boys say, Oh man, you threw it too far. While I go back behind the garage where we have a whole bunch of footballs waiting and ready for when my daddy sends one into the abyss. Everybody's looking for a hero. Once when I was a little kid, this newscaster guy asked me if my dad was my biggest hero. No, I said, my dad's just my dad. There was a crowd of newscasters circling around me, all of them with their microphones aimed at my face. Maybe I was nervous. I don't remember now. Maybe it was after his first Super Bowl win, his ring, new and shining on his finger. Me, just a little kid. So the ring was this whole glittering world, gold and black and diamonds against my daddy's brown hand. I remember hearing the reporter say, listen to those fans. Looks like everybody's found their next great hero. And now I'm thinking back to those times when the cold wind whipped around me and mom as we sat wrapped in blankets, yelling dad's name, so close to the game, we could see the angry spit spraying from the other team's coach's lips. So close, we could see the sweat on my daddy's neck and all the people around us cheering, all the people going around calling out his number, calling out his name. Zachariah 44, Zachariah 44. Is your daddy your hero? The newscaster had asked me. All these years later, just like that day, I know he's not my hero. He's my dad, which means he's my every single thing. Dad, day after the game. Day after the game and daddy gets out of bed slow. His whole body, he says, is 223 pounds of pain from toes to knees, from knees to ribs. Every single hit he took yesterday, remembered in the morning. Before the ever after. Before the ever after, there was Daddy driving to Village Ice Cream on a Saturday night in July before preseason training. Before the ever after, there was Mom in the back seat letting me ride up front, me and Daddy having man time together, waving to everyone who pointed at our car and said, That's him! Before the ever after, the way people said, That's him! sounded like a cheer. Before the ever after, the people pointing were always smiling. Before the ever after, Daddy's hands didn't always tremble, and his voice didn't shake, and his head didn't hurt all the time. Before the ever after, there were picnics on Sunday afternoons in Central Park, driving through the tunnel to get to the city, me and Daddy making up songs. Before the ever after, there were sandwiches on a grass fields, chicken salad and barbecue beef and ham with apples and brie. There were dark chocolates with almonds and milk chocolates with coconut and fruit and us just laughing and laughing. Before the ever after, there was the three of us and we lived happily before the ever after.